ho ho. All right, boys and ladies, pals, we're back. We're back. I've got my microphone. I'm ready to get started. I figured I would let the intro play again so that we can, right out of the gate, check our audio levels. Because game music seems to sometimes be a little bit too loud and sometimes a little bit too quiet, or sometimes my mic does. So we'll start out of the gate by adjusting those things. Anyways, Cosmetology Corner, Tom, Leah, and Alicia. Hello, all of you guys. <coughs> my parents fried fish. I poked it, uh, said nah, and currently have frozen chicken in the air fried, uh, and ramen in general toe sauce. Sounds like a nice tasty dinner. I'm gonna eat after stream today. I just got back from the gym. I hadn't been there all weekend, <laughs> naturally, because I was in Texas, and it was time to uh, fix that for myself. Uh, I have to get back on track with things and stuff. Uh, Damien, hello. Curtis Price, hello. Changeling DJ, hello. And Alicio, hi George, here it's Thursday. Now I'm in time for the live. Yes, we are just getting started today. Damien, my trip in Austin was delightful. I actually had a ton of fun down there. Uh, and I would very much like to get back down there this summer, so hopefully I can make that uh, happen. Sound seems fine so far. You guys can hear me okay. You can hear the game okay. Jacob Welsh, thank you for reporting. Uh, I guess we're gonna get started into it. Uh, what happened last time? We started this new adventure. We saw that there are witches in this world, maybe, possibly, and maybe demons? I don't know. There's a girl named Dispella. She's being hunted, and Professor Layton and Luke, they're helping her out. I'm not as familiar with Layton and Luke. I don't really know what their deal is. I don't really know what Aspella's deal is. I'm just here along for the ride. So I guess we're gonna start and see what happens today. Low George's save data. We can do that. Game volume is a bit loud. Don't you worry. I'll turn that down for you. Uh, all right. I'm going to turn game volume down. If it's still too loud, you guys let me know. If you think that I turned it down too much and it gets too quiet, let me know. <laughs> it, it might take me a hot minute to really find the sweet spot, but we're going to go ahead regardless. <clears throat> oh, what a nice uh, starting m music. <laughs> Little jingle. All right, oh, time to pay attention. Right. Is that the blue badger? Whoa, 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 what? Oh no, is this where we're getting a murder? Oh my God, an animated murder. Oh. Who's there? Is somebody there? Oh, well, he sounds like he's gonna keep us safe. It's probably nothing, but... <laughs> It's probably nothing. Wait, is this our girl Espella? Did she get herself into a fight? Oh, jeez. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, boys. Uh, that is the blue badger. No uh, way. What's he doing here? What did you do, girl? We stow her away on a boat and she commits murder? Is this how Phoenix Wright gets involved? Are we gonna have to defend this girl in a court of law? Prologue. Again. English turnabout. Boys, we're doing Phoenix Wright shit today! This is a turnabout! Yes! Oh my god, we're in the English courts! Ugh. I'm feeling queasy. Daddy Nick, oh my god, I've missed you. Boys, today is going to be a good day. Today, we're back home in the office, and by office, I mean the courthouse. It may not be our home turf, but that's fine, okay? We're Phoenix Wright. We're out of japan -ifornia. We're in England, you see. We're gonna do good things. We're gonna make great things happen. I thought we were just here to meet with the League of Attorneys, so I don't think that we're prepared to defend anybody in court, but it's fine. I don't care. I'm ready to defend. Give me a challenge. I will step up to the plate. I am Phoenix Wright. Objection. Yes. Damien! I saw your TikTok of your trip. You look so muscular the whole time. Aw. Thank you. <laughs> it, was a, it was a delightful trip. Um, and Cosmetology Corner, I'm making bread right now. Oh, nothing beats the taste of homemade bread. Let me get some water so I'm prepared for this. <clears throat> Alright, boys, let's fucking go. This is what I've been waiting for. Come on, Nick! It's just like I said. Oh my god, Maya, hold up. You have a 3D character model, which means I absolutely have to look at you in 3D. 
<gasps> oh. <clears throat> it's a little bit jarring, not gonna lie, to see um, my 2D sprites making the conversion over to 3D character models. But I will say, if you can actually... It, it sucks for you guys, because obviously you can't turn the 3D on in uh, uh, over live streams. But I will say, I'm giving you guys my word, I'm playing on an authentic 3DS. And with the 3D turned on, you can tell immediately that this is a game that benefits a lot from the 3D. She looks beautiful in 3D. It, the, the depth that you get from her character, ah, uh, oh my god, if they put Mia in this game with her uh, <laughs> double Ds, we'd be in trouble. Oh! <clears throat> Maya! What do you mean? You're such a worrywart. I knew you'd get all jittery before the trial. It's not like that, it's just... I didn't expect to have to stand in a foreign court. Right, yeah, we weren't supposed to. Yeah, we don't know much about this court system here, Nick. The legal league of attorneys would like to... Ha would like this as an exemplary case. Would like this to be an exemplary case. I can read, it's fine. <laughs> hmm, so that'd make you an exemplary attorney. I hope you don't infect any British lawyers with your nervous attitude. <laughs> Girl! Oh, it's so good to have you back in the stables with me. You're making it sound like I'm a virus or something. Steven! Hello! You're just in time to do some lawyering. I gotta adjust my lighting. Don't mind me uh, doing good things and stuff as a, as, a, as a... The man that I am. Okay, let me adjust. Get myself back on the fly. It looks like my uh, color correction is a little bit off. That's fine. I will fix her up real quick. You guys just hang tight a second. Doodly do. Turn her down a little, just a hair, just just a hair. Um. And between heaven and hell, hello, Jacob Welsh. Also, I love this rendition of the courtroom lounge. I know the bobs. Oh my god, guys! I'm so excited to hear the uh. Cross-examination music, the objection themes. Oh, it's gonna be beautiful. There's like a whole ass orchestra on this game. My name is Phoenix Wright. I'm a defense attorney. And this is Maya Faye. My, um, assistant of sorts. She gets arrested. A lot. <laughs> I, it wouldn't surprise me if she gets thrown on trial at some point in this game. Calling it now, if she ends up in a jail cell, don't worry. That's kind of normal for her. Of sorts? I guess I should explain why she's dressed up like that. But it's a long story, and we don't really have the time. <clears throat> We've come to England on the Legal League of Attorneys Exchange. I'm acting as a representative of the American Legal League. From Japan to Fornia. You know, they probably sent you because you don't seem to be busy ever. Girl, what do you mean? Half the time I'm saving your ass! <laughs> we weren't supposed to stand in court, so we kind of thought it would be like a vacation. But, here we are. As usual, we've been dragged into a strange case. Hey Nick, so what do you suppose this trial's all about? What if it was this? Look, check out today's paper. Hey, it's Chelmy! Elusive jewel thieves at large in London. Scotland Yard on red alert. Oh. Wouldn't that be cool? Uh, Maya, don't get your hopes up. We're here on an exchange. It should be a simple textbook trial. Oh, really? London's a big city. I don't believe the odds of us getting a case like that are in our favor. Hopefully. <laughs> Well, that's boring. Sorry to have kept you oh! waiting. Girl? Ma'am? Oh! Do you? Ah! Phoenix Red animated! I am Miss Darklaw, teacher at the Alcott School for Young Women. The... Espera, what? This man is your defense lawyer. Darklaw? Aspella? Whoa, 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 wait, what? Ma'am, I have questions that I shouldn't know the answers to. Pleased to meet you. Oh, you don't sound like you're in a great state of mind at all. 
All right. First immediate impressions. Can we all agree that Miss Darklaw just looks and sounds like an evil character ripped straight out of a Harry Potter film? I'm sorry, book, whichever you prefer. Like, could, could you stamp I'm the bad guy on your forehead <laughs> in one way or another? Who are you? Why do you have a spell? Why is she in a schoolgirl uniform? How, how do so many things happen with a spell so fast? She got put on the boat real fucking quick. She was just found guilty of, like, assaulting somebody on the boat, and now she's a schoolgirl at your academy? What? Uh, it'll all come together, I'm sure. Everybody's making food in the chat. Cosmetology Corner, you're making cinnamon rolls? Okay. Um, looks like she's dead inside. Zach, hello, welcome to the chat. All right, Phoenix Wright, attorney at law. Pleased to meet you. Um, I'm Phoenix Wright, your attorney. Pleased to meet you. Dude, what's with this girl? Can she- is she death, man? <laughs> is this girl the defendant in today's case? That is correct. She's the pupil I'd like you to represent. She's pleading guilty, so there's not much you need to do. Wait, pleading guilty? I suggest you accept the punishment proposed by the prosecution. Wait, 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 what? What kind of request is that? Um, Spella? What are you accused of? Have you not received the case materials? Uh, no. We haven't. And we weren't told a thing. My, my. Forgive me for this oversight. Here, this is the case file. Attorney! Defendant! The court hearing will begin now. Please, proceed to the courtroom. Well then, I entrust a spell to you. Um, yeah, that's- wait, what? <laughs> no way, I, I didn't even have time to look through the case file. Espella, be a good girl and don't cause any trouble. Hi. <laughs> I'm... Yeah, what? I'm... Uh-huh. Not a witch. Okay, you know what? That's that's fine, girl. Ooh, Maya, there is no shortage of kooky characters that we defend in the courthouse. All right, you're not a witch. That's great. But have you committed murder? That's what I really need to know here. Espella, what did you just say? Chop, chop, defense! Let's not keep everyone waiting! Yeah, don't worry. I'm on my way. I'm on my way from misery to happiness today. And so, another trial begins. And as always, I've got no idea what's gonna happen. That's okay, I'm pretty used to it by now. Let's do it, Nick. Let's do it, Nick. Yes, oh my god, I love her voice. All right, boys, this is gonna go fine. I'm in my elements. This is what I'm used to. Oh my god, who's the prosecutor? Who's the judge? Oh! The court is now in session for the trial of Espella Cantabella. <laughs> Espella Cantabella? What the fuck? Okay, no, that's fine. Wow. I'm gonna miss my old friend, the judge. I'm gonna miss Edgeworth. I'm assuming he's probably not the prosecutor in this game. That's fine. Um, let's roll into it, boys. The Deo Communist, welcome to the chat. Is ready, Your Honor. Flinch. Oh my god. <laughs> they made an English version of Prosecutor Pain, and his name is Flinch because he flinches in pain. Oh my god. They should be a couple. Flinch and Pain. They'd be two gay men, homosexuals. Flinch is gonna be the top because then it will quite literally be Flinch in Pain. Pain. You see what I'm where I'm going with this? It works. They both look like weak, sad little old expired twinks. They'd make a great couple. I'm here for it. I'm gonna ship them. Uh, somebody needs to. There's probably fan art that exists of Flinch and Pain together. If there's not, I want to get the trademark on that going right away. I'm gonna write a whole fan fiction for these two. They're both gonna lose in court all the time and then go take it out on each other. <laughs> How about the defense? 
Are you ready? Absolutely not. Uh, um, yes. Well, I guess you could call it ready, Your Honor. Oh, dude, Phoenix's voice is hot. Hotter than my voice. God damn it. That's going to suck. So I'm not going to be able to replicate that. All the voice acting I'm going to be a fan of. I'm going to have to find out by the end of this game who the voice actor is for Phoenix. I don't know how you can be turned on by a voice, but I'm kind of turned on by his voice. Hmm. Game audio a little low. I can turn it up. First appearance in a British court. Well, is. yes, that's right. That, that is, in fact, correct. It is my first and foremost appearance. The Legal League of Attorneys Exchange, was it? Hmm, sounds like fun. Thank you. That's what happens when you're a successful you're lawyer. the sights, you can take it easy today. Don't worry. Prosecutor Flinch will take care of everything. I bet you will. He's treating us like amateurs, Nick. Oh boy, this looks bad. Can you really defend this girl? Can I? Phoenix, your voice is a little bit soft. I gotta say, I wonder if there's an option. Let me pause for just a second. I don't know if there's an option that exists to change voice. All in a day's work for Maya Fey, Ace Assistant. As you'd expect from a gentleman in I training. want voices to be high. And we could probably lower background music a little bit. So, so I can I can mix and match audio in here because I think the voices, in my opinion, the voices seem a little bit quiet compared to the music. Um, w again, we'll keep tinkering as we play through. This is how I'm gonna do it for this hot second. You guys, let me know how things sound. Keep keep me informed. Keep me posted. We'll we'll fix it at some point. <laughs> <clears throat> Oh, of course. Now that I try to change it, they stop talking. God damn it. Ah, I see. Well, since this is your first case here, I will ask you a few simple questions to make sure we're all on the same page. Oh. Uh, yeah, no, th th that's fine by me. Dang, time to sink or swim. Answer my questions then, Mr. Wright. What is the name of the defendant? It's me, your honor. <laughs> I'm on trial. Um, no, it's Miss Espella Cantabella. It should be Miss Darkwell, I think. That would be Espella Cantabella, Your Honor. Honor with a U. Oh! That is correct. Phew. It's the first hurdle. <laughs> Guys, I'm a professional. Been doing this for three years now, and here I am trying to name my defendant. I see the English take me seriously. I see you're terribly proud of yourself for answering that basic question. Ugh. Let's move on to the next question. What is the nature of the offense? Hmm. What crime is Espella accused of? You know, Espella seems like such a timid girl. You think it's something minor, like shoplifting? Maybe. I wouldn't call it minor, though. It can't be anything major, uh, like that large-scale jewel theft. Please, answer the question. Can you name the two offenses? Wait, did he just say two? <laughs> Nick, think! What other petty offense could it be? Uh, I don't know, I'm clueless about this case. We weren't told a goddamn thing about it, after all. My, my. Could it be that our esteemed visitor left his common sense back home? All the evidence is in the court record. You haven't forgotten that, have you? Oh god, it's tutorial. This is this is tutorial time for the Leighton boys. It's a crossover game. Our Leighton friends who don't play the Ace Attorney, they might not know what's going on here the same way I didn't know what was going on in the Leighton game. But listen, I'm a seasoned professional in the Ace Attorney world. You don't need to, like, patronize me like this. All right, court record, I got it. Don't worry, Maya, I'm gonna find it. There it is, there's my court record button. Yeah, it just slipped my mind. That happens to me sometimes. Okay, let's check it now. Let's. Police records. The suspect is Espella Cantabella. Charges theft and assault. Not murder! That's nice. She only beat the shit out of someone. She didn't kill them. 
Notes, inflicted light injuries. Medical report, light injury, laceration to the back of the head, hit with a long blunt object. All right, girl, don't worry, I'll get you out of this. The court record holds all the evidence from this case. I'd better take a look. Right, defense, you've had enough time to ponder my question. What is Miss Cantabella accused of? Fraud! <laughs> she's a phony, your honor, she's a witch. She's not even a person. No, it's theft and assault. Well, according to the case outline, it was theft and assault. Indeed, what disgusting crimes. Hmm, is that correct, defendant? Yes. No kidding. She doesn't look like a violent girl, at least not to me. Somebody in my building set off their fire alarm or smoke detector. I wonder if you guys can hear it. Now that that's settled, Prosecutor Flinch, please briefly outline the case for the court. Oh, I forgot to check profiles. Thank you, Between Heaven and Hell. I gotta see my profiles. We gotta get everybody's ages in, in order. A spell of Cantabella. It doesn't give ages. Excuse me, what the fuck? A spell of Cantabella, the defendant, student at Owlcoat School. Pleads guilty. Great. That's great for me. And Darklaw, my client and Espella's teacher at Owl's Coat School for young women. God, have any of you guys had experience being in an all-male or an all-female school? I can't imagine going to a school where you're not allowed to interact with the opposite sex. And I'm a gay man, and I couldn't imagine it. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. Oh, 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 we got music. Oh, but I turned the music down. Oh, but I like this music. Can I turn it back up? Oh. Oh, she's building, though. Where is... Where's my options? Okay, we'll turn it up a little bit. You, you guys will keep me in store. Oh, dude. The incident took place on a small freighter moored at the harbor on the River Thames. The freighter was carrying goods away from London. The defendants illegally boarded the ship and tried to steal some of its cargo. D d d girl, you look like an action star. But she was discovered by a crew member and captured by the ship's security guard. So, she was caught red-handed. And she violently resisted when found by the crew member. Violently resisted? <laughs> oh, jeez. Indeed, she picked up the steel pipe and hit the crew member on the head. Sounds pretty vicious. So, that's the assault she's accused of. And what did the defendant attempt to steal from the freighter? A stuffed toy, your honor. Are you shitting my guts? It's the Metropolitan Police mascot, PC Badger. Oh, hell no, boys. We gotta go back to the States. I'm sorry, I mean Japanifornia. We gotta phone up Dick Gumshoe, and we gotta let him know that some rogue cop in England stole his design of the Blue Badger and made a knockoff for the Metropolitan Police Department um, called the PC Badger, and he needs to start filing uh, some copyright lawsuits and, and, get, and, and do something about this. I'm not gonna stand for this. Excuse you. Nick, I want one. I see that mascot made a career for itself in England. Who would have thunk it? <laughs> well, I think we all have a clear picture of the incident now. The prosecution may begin. The prosecution calls its first witness. Please, bring him in. Uh, there's something fishy about this trial. And there's something even fishier about my client. There isn't an ounce of expression on her face. I'd better keep my eyes wide open. Indeed, I should. Wow. Hi. Witness, oh. state your name and profession. Yeah, my voice doesn't really match his. Witness, state your name and profession. A ship is always at risk at every hour, minute, and second. That's where I come in. Oh. I am a peacekeeper. The one and only guardian to an otherwise defenseless ship. Wow, okay. Tell me you're a gay man who's got an ego complex describing his job without telling me you're a gay man who has an ego complex in describing his job. Oh, jeez. 
<laughs> oh, name's wow. Smiles. Johnny Smiles. Security Guard Supreme. Johnny Smiles? Wow. Ripped straight out of Pornhub, I see. <laughs> you got really nice eyes, though. I'll give you that much. Eh, yes. According to the police reports, the witness was patrolling the freighter on the night of the crime. Yeah, I was. Patrolling the freighter, and my expertly trained eyes leave nothing unseen. I'll go blind if you keep smiling like that. Very well, Mr. Smiles. We would like to hear your testimony. Describe what happened during your night patrol. Yes, sir. Johnny Smiles will reveal all. All right, witness. Witness testimony, boys. Let's go. Let's rip him apart. We're gonna we're gonna stretch you out real good, buddy. Bend over. <laughs> Patrolling on the night of the crime. That night, I went on patrol as usual. ZZZO. I don't know what that means. My keen ears latched onto some suspicious noises coming from the cargo hold. I sprinted at full speed to the cargo hold, but I was too late to stop the blow. The next moment, I captured the criminal expertly. Within seconds, I had established uh, there was nothing out of order at the crime scene. Nothing out of order? Um, do we have any evidence, by the way? <laughs> and so... The woman you arrested was... It was the defendant, a spell cantabella, sir. And, as per standard patrolling procedure, all lights were on and you saw her clearly. Is that correct, Mr. Smiles? Y yes, sir! I'm an expert, after all. Oh, he hesitated. Is it just me? Or did he hesitate before saying that? The defense may cross-examine the witness. Uh, yes, sir. Ugh, I'm starting to talk like that guy. Let us see how skilled our visiting barrister is. <laughs> yes. By the way, Mr. Wright. Uh, yes, Your Honor? Our cross-examination procedure should be the same as anywhere else. But, just in case, would you like to have it explained to you? The cross-examination procedure. Should I ask for an explanation? Absolutely not. I'm a veteran at this point. Thank you, Your Honor. I got this. No, thank you. I'm fine. I press on the witness on all suspicious statements to gather information. And when there's a contradiction, I present evidence just like I always do. Okay, let's do it, Nick. The defense may now cross-examine the witness. Don't you wish Johnny was shirtless? Zach, keep your pants on. All right, we're here to solve a mystery. In the words of Daphne Blake, all right, let's press everything. Um, oh. Hold the it. L button is the press. Hold it! Um, what's ZZZO? Thank you, Phoenix. Whoa. Ha, that's right! It's not something you'd know being a security professional. Not being a security professional. That's our special jargon. It's how we talk about the time in our trade. Hmm. Let me get this straight, Mr. Professional. You're using letters to tell the time. Yes, you see, ZZZO stands for 2220, which is 1020 p.m. Right, okay, so it was 1020 p.m. That's, uh, pretty accurate. How can you be so sure about the time? Well, that's when the TV show I was watching in the security room ends. TV show? I meant to do the rounds at 10 o'clock, but for a pro like me, that's just a guideline. I like your work ethic style, sir. <laughs> Doesn't sound very professional to me. Anyway, I was patrolling the ship like I do every night. Your honor, may I? What is it, Prosecutor Flinch? I would like to get the event straight while referring to this crime scene photo. Well, there's so many of them. The defendant and the crew member were fighting in the back of the cargo hold. Isn't that correct? Yes, sir, they were fighting right under that emergency light. <laughs> Some items are spilling out on the broken crate. Indeed. 
That crate was broken by the defendant with a steel pipe. Incidentally, the items we can see spilling out are stuffed toys depicting London's own police mascot, the PC Badger. I see. Crime scene photo shall be added to the court record. Okie doke. Love that for me. Let's take a look at her. A photo of the cargo hold. Touch details to see more. All right. And then it's the same picture that we were just looking at. Is it not? There is. All right. So there's some suspicious shoes. That's one suspicious thing. Um, and then we'll have to see what else we can pull from there later. Okay. That's fine. Let's continue along. <laughs> Can you latch onto some suspicious noises coming from the cargo hold? Press that. And when you heard these noises, you immediately found them suspicious. <laughs> Got it. Whoops. Sorry. That's right. An expert of my caliber can always tell when a noise is in fact suspicious. It's a nice talent. When my smiley senses start tingling, it means there's a crime taking place. Wow. So can you tell us more about the noises you heard? It was... That's right. The sound of two women fighting. Naturally, I sprang into action. And I arrived at the crime scene in the blink of an eye. So in other words... You went to the cargo hold because you heard strange noises. That's correct? Yes! That's about it. Back to where I started. Oh, jeez. I sprinted at full speed to the cargo hold, but I was too late to stop the blow. Whoops, I meant to, uh, whoops, whoops. Oh, we're going all the wrong ways. Sprinted at full Hold speed, it. all right. The blow? The defendant, Miss Cantabella, hits the crew member with a steel pipe, didn't she? Yes, that's right. As I opened the door to the cargo hold, the defendant struck the victim with the head. Had I arrived a second earlier, I would have stopped the blow with my own head. How heroic of you. Look, we gotta be fair, this guy's clearly going through a midlife crisis because he dyed his hair platinum blonde, and you only do that when you're hitting your midlife crisis. <laughs> I don't think a second would have made much of a difference. Yeah, let's not take this expert too seriously, Maya. <laughs> Witness saw the defendant deal the final blow. Is that correct? Yes, sir. I expertly witnessed the crime with my very own sparkling eyes. Oh, he knows he has good eyes. Is that so, I see? The next moment, I captured the criminal expertly. Hold it! And you claim the assailant was the defendant, Miss Cantabella. Precisely! Naturally, she abandoned all hope seeing a security pro like myself join the scene. She dropped that steel pipe she was holding to the floor with a clank. Hmm. I see, I see. That's what a guilty person would do in that situation. Isn't that what any person would do? Exactly, Your Honor. There's no need to continue this cross-examination. Ugh. Jeez. Within seconds, I'd establish there was nothing out of order at the crime Hold scene. It. Well, what do you mean by that? Are you sure you didn't notice anything unusual about the cargo hold? Not a thing. Well, aside from the defendant swinging that pipe around. Could someone else have been hiding in that room? Objection. Oh my god! Objection! How obnoxious! The security guard patrolling the freighter is responsible for checking every corner. That's the thing about this guy. He's much more slower. It's funny because he's like English, but he has almost like a southern drawl without the southern accent. So he just has like a drawl to his dialect. He, he talks way slower than Payne does. He would have spotted an intruder right away. Isn't that so, witness? Um, yes! I carry my trusty bucket torch for precisely such a task. Pocket torch. <laughs> bucket torch? <laughs> I'd have noticed anything suspicious in an instant. What is it, Maya? Um, I was just looking at the evidence in the court record. 
And I get the feeling there's something funny about this testimony. So you're saying that there's a... CONTRADICTION! So, that's all he has to say. Well, Nick, what do you think? We managed to get our hands on some new evidence, but... Pressing alone can only get us so far. Um, yeah... That means it's time to present evidence to the court. Right. Compare what the witness is saying with the evidence in the court. Sometimes they won't match up, and that means they're not telling the whole truth. Right, I got it, girl. Alright. Touch the court record. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alright, let's try this. Oh, wow, wow that, that slow zoom, though. He's thinking, I need to uncover the truth by myself. Don't worry, Phoenix, I got your back. I'm a professional. Alright, so let's look at the court record. Wow, there's hints, too. There's everything for us. Um, present... So all we really have is the photo. Light injury, laceration to the back of the head, hit with, hit with a long, blunt, blunt object. That might be important. Um, details... I don't know, the shoes look a little out of the ordinary, but I don't know if that's enough for us to go off of. Any new profiles? Johnny Smiles! Expert security guards saw the incident in the cargo hold while doing the rounds. Great. Alright, so he went on patrol at 1020, his keen ears latched onto his suspicious noise. He sprinted at full speed, but I was too late to stop the blow. Okay. Next moment, I captured the criminal expertly. Within seconds, I had established there was nothing out of order at the crime scene. He said he stopped the final blow. Light injury, laceration to the back of the head, hit with a long, blunt object. I mean... You might ask, like, what's the suspicious noise? This sounds like you, you had a one and done, like, you know, clonk somebody on the back of the head. So he's saying that he heard a noise already, and then saw the final blow, so that doesn't add up perfectly. Uh, I, I was expecting something to be a little more concrete and clear for the tutorial, though, so that feels a little bit sketch. I, I don't know if I can work with that. Within seconds, I'd established there was nothing out of order at the crime scene. This might be the thing we want to go for. Um... I feel like the shoes are a little bit out of the order, but maybe that's just my own brain thinking, like... The toys, sure, they should be there, but why are there shoes there? Isn't that weird? Am I reading too much into this? Why is there an open box? I don't know. Let's present it and see what happens. Objection. Such a trial. Oh, boys. You're saying that there was nothing out of the order in the cargo hold. Well, that's a bit funny. Huh? The point is, one of the crates in the cargo hold appears to have been tampered with. Objection! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it kills me every time. Ah, that. The defendant must have smashed it with the pipe. Nothing odd about it. Nobody, please. Take a look at the crime scene photo. There's this broken crate where the fight took place, but also... Aha! There's another crate here that seems kind of strange, don't you think? Not exactly what I was going for, but I will go with it. It was a little bit strange that it was open. I was more curious about the shoes, but it's fine. <laughs> this crate, sitting quite a distance away from where the, freight, the fight took place, it appears to have been forced open. Whoa! Phoenix with the hand on the hip? He's got that sass! Isn't this the sort of thing a security guard should immediately notice? God, he's sexy as hell. <clears throat> you testified that you established there was nothing out of order at the crime scene. So, how come you didn't notice something so obvious? Oh, boys! Look at this Bob! Look at our boys in the hot seat! Oh, oh! Order! Order! That's... That's certainly a serious oversight. Particularly for someone claiming to be an expert. Objection! 
objection! Whether the witness is an expert or not, it bears no relevance to this case! What matters is that he saw the defendant hit the victim with a steel pipe! Hold it! Oh! What you just said? I'm afraid I can't let that slide. Excuse me? I am an expert guard. Focused, thorough, precise. A true professional. To prove it, I will testify once more. You're all dying to know why I ignored that one crate, huh? Uh, well, maybe not dying, but yeah, we're curious. Very well, the witness shall continue his testimony. Uh, what excuse do you think he'll come up with next, Nick? I don't know, but listen, we've been through the ringer one or two times before, we got this. What did he actually see? Alright, witness testimony, here we go again! What I saw at the crime scene. It's only natural that I missed the other crate. The lights in the cargo hold weren't on. But of course I had this. Guard's best friend, his trusty pocket torch. A fucking flashlight. <laughs> the emergency light was on, mind. So it wasn't dark, uh, so I could, it could, it wasn't so dark that I couldn't see. I saw that girl stand right in front of the crew member she attacked. Ooh, ooh, I think I know what to go with. And so there was no one else in that room. You have Johnny's word for it. Johnny smiles. Frank, it's the never-ending chocolate bar for me. Wait a moment. The security company claims that the lights were on during the patrol. Yes, yes, that's the official procedure you see. We're police officers. We very often lie on our reports so that questions don't come our way. <laughs> but those light controls can be such a pain in the... Wait, no, that's not it, I mean. The truth is, an expert like me doesn't need those lights to do his work. Not when I've got this. The focused beam of my trusty torch cuts through the darkness like a laser. <sighs> the witness will refrain from pointing the torch in this direction. Justice may be blind, but I'd rather not be. Ah, sorry, Your Honor. This uh, trusty torch shall be added to the court record as evidence. Okay, if you insist. <laughs> ah! What is that? Uh, what is it, Your Honor? This pocket torch is covered in something sticky! Oh, God. Who have you been shoving that inside of? Oh, is it your chocolate? Oh, it seems my sweet little buddy's been up to some mischief. Sweet little buddy? Do you mean your chocolate? Chocolate! Chocolate! That is silent chocolate! <laughs> it's gonna make you live forever! Johnny left sticky fingerprints all over his flashlight. Yeah. Uh, don't look at me. I'm not touching it. Being acclimated to the sprite animation, the 3D models just don't have the same impact. Yeah, I will say. So, like that, like I said, I said it was jarring. I didn't say it was bad. I, I think it. I think you hit it on the head. The acclimation is what's got to be different. I'm so used to seeing the 2D character models that this is definitely like fish out of water territory. But I do think that over time it will grow on me. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Cross-examination, boys. Let's look at me. Look at him in 3D. Wow. And also, I will say, this game really benefits. A t if you guys have a 3DS, I would highly recommend playing this in full 3D. I'm turning the effects up to the max, and it just looks so beautiful. I think because of the nature of this game being like, you know, you have a character and a background portrait. It, like, works really well with 3D because you're not moving so much. You don't have to worry about motion sickness. You're just kind of, like, looking into, like, a diorama. It's it just, it's beautiful, I will say. It's only natural that I missed the other crate. Right, right, right. Okay, so actually, I think I know where to go with this. So, he messed up here. I saw that girl stand right in front of the crew member as she attacked. Right. But, actually, she was hit in the back of the head. Objection! Objection! 
God, yeah. It, it's a bit of a different objection for Phoenix, but I, I like this one too. It still works for me. It, it's not as powerful as the objection. It, it's much more calm. Objection. You know why it's calm? Because Phoenix is, he's maturing a little bit. He's daddy Phoenix now. He's been through the ringer. He knows what he's doing. He can relax a little bit. He's graduated. We don't need Mia anymore. We're our own, we're our own master chief lawyer. You're sure the defendant was standing right in front of the crew member? Absolutely. They were facing each other the entire time. Well, that's weird because it clearly contradicts this evidence. What do you mean? <laughs> According to the victim's medical report, the blow was dealt to the back of the head. The back of the head? Do you understand now? Oh, the point! If they were facing each other, there's no way the victim could have been hit from behind. Oh, 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 oh! His finger comes out of the screen! Boys, it's beautiful! Oh, this is so cool! Yeah. Wait. Ah, yes, sir! Witness! Can you offer an explanation for this contradiction? Yes! Explain yourself! It's the first time hearing of this! Yes, sir! I, um, it's... Uh, it's strange, isn't it? I'm totally sure they were fighting face to face! I, I'd swear this melting chocolate bar, chocolate bar on it! It doesn't look like he's lying, but then... Hey, Nick! Look at me! Jesus Christ, Maya! What are you doing?! Oh, I was just checking if I could hit the back of your head while you were facing me. <laughs> Holy fuck! Alright, listen, if the 3D character models means that we're gonna be throwing in shenanigans like this, and we're just gonna be go full-on cartoon, and Maya's gonna bash me in the goddamn face with a lead pipe... Girl, we're not playing a game of Clue here! The fuck is wrong with you? But you look beautiful. It doesn't seem doable. Especially for someone as vertically challenged as me. <laughs> um, how about you keep your dangerous little experiments inside your head, Maya? Jesus Christ, I kind of like living, thank you. Well, at least we've learned a couple of important things. First, this witness is unreliable. And second, that the prosecution didn't investigate this case properly. If my gut feeling is right... There's much more to this case than meets the eye. Now's my chance. What should I do? Oh my god, plead not guilty. For sure. 100%. Your Honor! The defense asserts once more that the defendant Espella Cantabella is innocent. What? Th this is foolishness! Just who do you think you are? Anyway, waltzing in here with your ridiculous assumptions. Balderdash, I say. That's not how it's supposed to be. What did he just say? Not how it was supposed to be. In light of this new development, the court's opinion is that the defendant is in no way cleared of suspicion. However... The witness's testimony has been proven unreliable. Okay, that's more like it. Looks like I'm starting to win over this judge. Objection. Oh, God. Don't forget the defendant admits all charges. Surely her guilt is beyond doubt. Objection. Yeah, objection. The defendant is just a schoolgirl. You can't go on her confession alone. She could have been coerced. So far, we have established only one thing. That women can't make decisions for themselves. <laughs> that Mr. Smiles is neither an expert nor even a reliable witness. Wow, really ripping him apart. Hold it! In my long six-month career as a security guard... <laughs> oh, don't we all feel that way sometimes? Never have my professionalism and expertise been questioned. Well, you let me know how that goes after you've made it to your performance review. <laughs> Isn't six months barely past the probation period? 
You're saying Goldilocks there is innocent. In other words, that she didn't assault anyone. And that she didn't steal this toy. Isn't that so, Mr. Lawyer? Yes. At least... We've yet to see any proof that she tried to steal it. Ha <laughs> ha! I got you there! I beg your pardon? Got me how? I have a decisive piece of evidence! Oh jeez. The proof that that girl was trying to kidnap the PC Badger! What? Oh wow, Phoenix. You do? Even Flinch is shocked. When I seized the girl at the crime scene, she was clasping this in her hand and she didn't even seem to notice. And what would that be? It would appear to be PC Badger's tag, your honor. <clears throat> oh. Now that you mention it, this mascot does have some sort of ill-fitting tag attached. What's this engraved on the tag? Is that an address? Oh, you mean there's an address written on there? It would appear to be Scotland Yard's and their telephone number. It is Scotland Yard's mascot, after all. Great, so I know who to send the paperwork to when I file a report about the copyright infringement. This tag, it's been ripped from one of the PC Badger toys. Yes, sir. The suspect was caught in the act of nicking this very toy. The tag was nipped off during the fight. Wait, what? Then this tag is... What we have here is decisive evidence that she was trying to steal the cargo. I don't know that that's correct. <laughs> no way. I wasn't expecting evidence like that. Objection! Oh my god, dude. Witness! I have never informed of such evidence! If you had this in your possession, why didn't you hand it to the police? Sorry. Mr. Prosecutor, but I am an expert at what I do, and my expert advice to myself was that I'd better keep this as my secret weapon. Ah, yes, exactly how court works. You should always keep the evidence hidden and then present it blindly to the court, you know, for the dramatic flair. So I waited for the right moment to single-handedly settle this trial. Uh... Looks like Flinch and I are both in uncharted waters now. This tag is vital evidence to be added to the court record. <laughs> Frank, uh, George, I think you mean the copy right infringement. Do -do All right, tag torn from the PC Badger. A spell was clasping it in her hand when seized by smiles. Great. Flinch sounding a bit too much like Wendy. <laughs> Wendy talks way faster, though. Um, defense. Mr. Wright, was it? Yes, Prosecutor Flinch? Your appearance in this court was very hastily decided. It was a very hastily decided affair. That's true. The call from the Attorney's Association came out of nowhere. Perhaps, in all the confusion, the request from your client escaped your attention. Were you not instructed to accept the sentence proposed by the prosecution? Come to think of it, Miss Darklaw did say something about that before the trial. She's pleading guilty, so there's not much you need to do. I suggest you accept the punishments proposed by the prosecution. Nah, she's working in cahoots with you. You're both- you, you, she has purple hair, you have purple glasses, I say this from a mile away. That's what you were asked to do. You have convinced us all of your skill. So, your good name will not suffer. Why not simply admit the defendant is guilty and call it a day? No, that's not how you earn a reputation, and I've got a reputation to maintain. I give all of my clients found not guilty, even one that was an actual murderer. <laughs> or wait, he might have pleaded guilty. I, I, I set a trap for him and I forgot which choice he made. Regardless, he was fucked either way. Hmm. What do you say to that, Mr. Wright? Depending on your stance on this matter, the court may now pass the verdict. Yeah, I'm getting to that. My stance. Uh, it's something I don't need to think about twice. 
I'm gonna continue this trial because I love trials, boys. The defense requests the trial continue. What? The defense stands by its assertion that Aspella Cantabella is not guilty. Very well, Mr. Wright. If that's your desire, then I too have a request to make. Your Honor. Yes, Prosecutor Flinch. The prosecution calls its second witness. Oh, boys. Uh, uh, wait a second. What about me? Come on, guys. Don't forget about Johnny. Let me start over from the top. No detail omitted. Haha, <laughs> he's sick of your shit. I suggest you leave the witness stand and go back to witnessing your crimes on television. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Bye, hunty. It was great meeting you. Well, I believe a break is in order. The court will now adjourn for a 15-minute break. Mr. Flinch, prepare your witness. Is that understood? Yes, Your Honor. The defense has no objections. Looks like Flinch finally got serious about this case. And that means the real game starts now. Boys, forget us! Oh, shoot! To be continued! <gasps> You're killing me with these. All right, but we're only an hour in. I'm nervous, because that means if we do... It, it, do we do part two of this trial right now, or are we switching back over to late and I have questions? I'm going to save. I, I, I want to keep playing. Like, I don't think I'm done right now. Um, overwrite my save data, sure. Like, we're in the middle of court. Is it still Phoenix? It's still Phoenix, boys! Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I... This might be a two-hour stream. I don't know. We're going to try and do... Whatever is about to happen next, talk to the second witness, hopefully. Uh, while we do that, I'm going to refill my water real quick. So hang tight with me, boys, because uh, my throat's a little parched from doing that prosecutor voice. Uh, and, and then I will be right back. No one go anywhere, all right? Listen, my fridge is right next to my streaming setup, so it's very convenient for me. I can grab my water. I can keep talking the whole time. You guys can hear me. Uh, I hope somebody getting out to pee. I love the sound of running water. Put her away. Whoops, that's free. And I am back. I'm ready to cord it up again. Doodly do. Um, while I'm here though, let me adjust my headphones because they're getting a little bit tangled. Whoops. Whoopsie daisies. Um. I will also doodly do respond to a Snapchat I got from uh, Alfredo. Ooh, he's working. <laughs> doodly do. I'm streaming. And now he knows. Okay, boys. I think we're ready. Up. Oh, I gotta readjust my filter, my, my color catcher filter. Don't know why that's so sensitive and gets so uh, messed up so easily, but I'm not worried about it. Turn her down a little bit. That'll be fine. Oh, this music is so good. Guards are animated for sure. I like that. All right, now let me drink. All right, are you boys ready? Round two, <clears throat> let's get into it. Phew, I'm glad the, this, the first part's over. That witness was quite a, quite a character. I bet he'd love to be one, in a crime drama. He'd end up making it a comedy though. Oh, shots fired. I'd hate it if poor Aspella was found guilty because of his shaky testimony. But, at least now it looks like we might be able to get a spell a not guilty verdict. Yeah, I hope that cheered a spell up a bit. Yeah, same, you know. Gotta keep her safe and whatnot. Okay, turn that down just a hair. Oh, you don't look happy with us. It's because you want your, uh, your pupil to get, uh, punished. Ah! Forgot about Dark Law. She's reading my newspaper. 
Maybe it's just me, but uh, she doesn't look very pleased. Oh, it's you. I appreciate your efforts, Mr. Wright. Um, thank you? But, while I understand your drive to win in this case... My drive? This is not the time for your personal ambitions. I don't... I told you before, didn't I? That Aspella is pleading guilty and that you should accept the proposed punishment. This incident has already been settled between our school and the police. But, Miss Darklaw, Aspella could really be innocent! Believe me, it will be in Aspella's best interest if you end the trial as soon as possible. The more this trial drags on, the more traumatic it is for this poor girl. Um, well I'm sorry, but uh... I, I don't want someone to get wrongly accused just because they might be a little bit intimidated by being in the courtroom. She's gonna put on her big girl panties, she's gonna walk her ass into that courtroom, she's gonna let me do all of the work for her. In any case, Mr. Wright, we don't want our school being shoved into the limelight because of this case. So, if you could please refrain from picking at meaningless details such as that toy. Get this trial over with quickly. This is your client's wish, Mr. Wright. I understand, and I'll do my best. It's a relief to hear that. Let's go, Espella. Yes, Miss Darklaw. Okay. What the heck was that all about? We've been busting our butts in there trying to prove that Aspella's innocent, and she expects us to give up now? Well, what are you yelling at me for, Maya? But, when you think about it, Darklaw is acting very strange. Her own pupil's on trial and she just stands around reading other people's newspapers? Yeah, what's she so busy reading about anyway? There's nothing about Aspella in that paper. Was she checking the soccer scores or something? Maya's newspaper, the front page article is about the jewel thieves in London. And of course, you know they have to be connected to this case, because otherwise, why would they be brought up? <laughs> well, the break is almost over. We'd better go back. <clears throat> Flinch looked really confident about his new witness. I'm a spell's defense attorney, and I'll stand by her, no matter what. I have, I have a strong feeling about this one. It's going to go great for us. Court will now reconvene. Prosecution, is your witness ready? Of course, Your Honor. Bailiff, please bring her in. Oh my god. God, look at those hips! They don't lie! Shakira, what are you doing on the stand? Witness, state your name and occupation. Name oh. Olivia Raldente. oh no. Oh no, no, no. Game, don't do this to me. The warm winds of the Mediterranean Sea carry the spicy scent of a seafood stew. <laughs> Guys! Am I gonna have to do her voice? Budget, come on, just keep voicing her. Get, make all of her di dialogue work like this. Olivia al dente. A hot Sicilian stew that soothes the arts of sailors braving the raging waters. Oh wow, girl, what that knife do though? Blessed be the Sicilian cuisine and il nostro mare. Whoa, wow. Okay. I'm a little turned on. Yes, Miss Al Dente is employed as a cook on the freighter where the crime happened. A cook? That's a interesting attire you're wearing, Miss Al Dente. Yeah, I don't think that follows COVID protocols very well. But listen, to each their own. I'm sure your guests don't complain. This is my this is my work outfit. It gets very hot in the kitchen, you know. Oh jeez. Oh jeez, this is gonna go rough. It will be a pleasant change after that chocoholic guard run up my nose. Well, nice to see the judge is remaining impartial. Miss 
Al Dente discovered the defendant in the cargo hold while she went for supplies. Frank, Olivia like olives, and Al Dente like the pasta. The puns are real! She found a spella. So that would make her... The crew member that Johnny saw fighting with a spella. Oh, she's the one who got clonked on the head, is she? Well, she seems to be fine. That is right, Mr. Wright. Miss Al Dente was the first person to discover the intruder. Ah, then she's the victim of assault. Hit with a steel pipe. How cruel. If I'd only had my precious kitchen knife with me at the time. Oh, wow. I'd have shown my exceptional cutting skills. <laughs> I can talk. Let me look at this in 3D. Wow, it looks beautiful. The depth is immaculate, I will say. Nick, look at that. She's an expert potato peeler. You better watch out around her. Yeah, you know, those expert potato peelers, they're a real threat. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind, Maya. Witness, I will now hear your testimony. Describe to us what happened in the cargo hold. Certainmente, gladly. <laughs> Christ. Girl, are you gonna wiggle those hips the entire time? That's a little bit distracting. I don't mean to, like, objectify a woman, but, like, would it kill you to stand still? This is just, wow. It's something. I went to the cargo hold to check on the supplies. It was past 10 o'clock p.m. And I found that girl hiding and clutching one of them bizarro toys. She made as if to run away, so I tried to stop her. Then she grabbed a pipe. She's short, but she fiercely swung the pipe at me. I had to dodge. But she hit me on the head. I blacked out for a few minutes. Hm. According to the medical report, you suffered a laceration to your head. Is that correct? Ah, that. It's covered by the chef act, so you can't see it now. But when I chop up veggies, it hurts in the rhythm of the strikes. Chop! 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 Mmm, it sounds most terrible, Miss Al Dente. I should have been more careful, but she looks like a little, uh, piccola girl. Hmm, Olivia's much taller than Aspella. Yeah, Aspella's about the same size as you. Neither of you guys are model material. Hey! I may be short, but I'm well-proportioned. That's what matters, and not as well-proportioned as your sister. <laughs> your Honor, the prosecution would like to present... ...the decisive evidence that proves the defendant's guilt. Huh. This is a photograph of the defendant's fingerprints on the steel pipe. Okay... As you can see, the fingerprints are very clear. They were left by the assailant. Okay, but she's holding, like, the top of the pipe, right? That doesn't... It's not a very good... It's not a very good swinging motion. Like, uh, that might be the play here. <laughs> Alicia, please don't say the like Z. <laughs> uh, it's a bad habit, because in, in us Westerners, a lot of games, like the Mario games, and even earlier Phoenix Wright games, that's how they stereotype French. <laughs> and now also Italian. <laughs> well, that settles it. This is undoubtedly decisive evidence. Wait, what? The fingerprints on the weapon are Espella's? Just a your inquisitive mind at peace, Mr. Wright. There were no other fingerprints. Mm, this photograph shall be added to the evidence. Okay. Have I not warned you, Mr. Wright? Further examination is but a waste of time. Nick, what do we do now? This evidence clearly points to a spella. Well, we're pleading that a spell is not guilty. And if she's innocent, then this witness is lying. She's a big, fat phony with a perfect hourglass figure. All we need to do is expose that lie. I've got to think straight and focus on finding the truth. 
The defense may cross-examine the witness. Also, Phoenix, whatever happens to, um... What's her face? Uh, not Dahlia. Iris! Are you dating her? When I found the girl. Alright, so let me see what I can do here. Went to the cargo hold, it was past 10. She was Klein. She made as if to run away, so I tried to stop her, then she grabbed the pipe. Let's press this! I- the pipe is what's suspicious to me, so let me, like, find out how this works. The defendant tried to escape. Hmm, she adds nowhere to run though, cause she was at the far end of the room. I'm really good at catching chickens that try to run from the knife, so I got her. Rapidamente! And when you got her, things took a violent turn. Yeah, she was so small, you know, uh, you wouldn't think she adds that in her. There was a steel pipe propped up against the wall right next to her. Was it the pipe from this picture? <clears throat> yeah, she picked it up and held it in both hands, and then... She was short, but she fiercely swung the pipe at me. Press this. You're sure it was the defendant that swung the pipe at you? Oh my god. We know it was the defendant because her fingerprints were found on the weapon. As you can see, she held the pipe with both hands, just as the witness stated. Spell his fingerprints. That's some hard evidence, but then again... What is it, Nick? Um, there's something about those fingerprints. Oh! It sounds like you're onto something, Nick. Well, don't get too excited. It's just a hunch. These fingerprints, they don't look quite right to me for some reason. Same. Alright, we're on the same wavelength. That's a good sign. I think I know where this is going. A spell has swung this pipe while holding it in both hands? In any case, pray tell us what happened after the defendant took a swing at you. Alright, no, let's actually go back a second. Maybe I can press it already. present it already. She swung the pipe, but I tried to dodge, but how did she swing it when she was holding it in a non-swinging position? Objection! Objection, yes, here we go. You're claiming that the defendant swung the pipe at you. Well, that's impossible. Why do you say that, sweetie? The defendant's fingerprints were found on the pipe, however... There's a contradiction here. Oh my god. A contradiction impossible! That is the most interesting. Well then, the defense shall explain. Oh, I'm happy to. Alright, you see how there's a little corner piece on the end of the pipes? That's the end of one of the pipes. Here, I can show you the whole pipe, actually. Here, where's, where's a picture of the pipe? Details. So the pipe has those end points, right? The doodly-doo and the doodly-doo. You see what I'm talking about. The fingerprints on the pipe are right there at the... at the doodly-doo. <laughs> Whatever you... The, the end cap to the pipe. So the way she's holding it is not a swinging position. It's as simple as that. Uh, so the position of the fingerprints is the problem. It's the position of the fingerprints, Your Honor. Ah! The position? Oh, wow. According to the witness's testimony, the defendant held the pipe like this. Is this what we're doing now? We are really going all out with just like, we're gonna recreate the scene. We're gonna bring props into the courtroom. I'm, I'm here for it. I love it. In order to hit the witness on the head, she would have used raised the pipe like so. That is precisely what she did. And then she struck from above. But here's the problem. Think about the fingerprints that she would have left had she done just that. What are you getting at, Mr. Wright? Oh, wow! We get to see Phoenix's hands! Some people would pay good money for this. Look closely at the way I'm holding the pipe in this situation. The fingerprints are facing upwards away from the cap, right? 
would look like this. The thumb is above the other fingers, which is the opposite of what we saw. Indeed, there's no doubt about it. Now, take a look at the fingerprints that were actually left on the pipe. Looks a little weird, doesn't it? Goodness, the thumb, it's below the other fingers. What? <laughs> That's right. Miss Al Dente. What? What is it? Had the defendant attacked you as you described, the fingerprints would have been the other way around, which means... Something's not right with your testimony. <gasps> what if she caught it? Ah! Um, Miss Espella Cantabella. Like, that's a really weird way to hold a pipe, right? But what if the pipe was swung at Miss Espella Cantabella and she was like, Not today, hunty! Bitch, you thought! And she caught the pipe, because if you caught the pipe, the thumb would be facing up at the end of the pipe. <gasps> she was attacked?! Order! What is the meaning of this? These fingerprints were submitted as decisive evidence! How come this contradiction was not brought to light before? No! No! Miss El Dente, what do you have to say about this? Whoa, girl! Holy Christ! Alright, we don't need the whole charade of these talents that you have. But girl, wow, you handle fruit very well. Um, excuse me? Miss El Dente, this is a court of law. Please don't throw knives and fruit around in here. Know how to bring out the full sweetness of a sweet potato? Um, I'm sorry? You use a pinch of salt. Interesting, right? You use salt to make something taste sweeter. That is interesting. But also, I'm not following. I remember it now. It was the other way around, not as you expected. I'm sorry, I got a bit confused. You'd normally hold a pipe like that. But she's so small and the pipe is heavy, she held it the other way around. The other way? Not like this. She held it this way. Objection! Yeah, objection, that makes no sense. But you testified that she fiercely swung the pipe at you. I'm telling you, I got confused. Olivia's sorry, okay? How could you mistake the way she held the pipe if it was right in front of you? Oh, why don't you go and fry an egg? What does it matter if she held it one way or the other? Well, one way you can swing it and the other way not so much. You wouldn't call a slightly salted sweet potato a salty potato, because it's still a sweet potato, no matter how you add to it. Witness probably has a point, doesn't she, Mr. Wright? Um... So, the defendant attacks the witness, holding the pipe backhanded. Seems a bit unnatural, but it does make sense, I suppose. Well, not if my theory's correct. Indeed it does, Your Honor. There is no problem with this evidence after all. Does the defense agree? If I agree that there are no problems with this evidence, we'll be one step away from losing this case. There's gotta be a contradiction somewhere in that fishy testimony. Could Espella have hit Olivia holding the pipe backhanded? Uh, let's prove there's a contradiction. We'll, we'll find one, probably. Bluff till you get it. Well, Miss Al Dente, I'm afraid that... You're in a pickle now. My pickle. <laughs> I don't really see why. Adding a pack of lies to a testimony can turn things very sour for a witness. Phoenix with the sass. <laughs> it seems the defense is prepared to prove its claim. That there is a contradiction in this witness's testimony. Correct, your honor. I won't know until I try. Well, the defense shall now present evidence to the court. The evidence contradiction the assertion the defense in to hit the witness holding the pipe backhanded is... Um, yes, I was actually just getting to that. So, the evidence, you see, would obviously be the fact that, um... The fact that, um... Uh, I don't know... <laughs> well, because, as you can 
see clearly in the medical report the laceration was to the back of the head and therefore therefore you see I mean we already used this so I don't think that would work again I think it's got to be the fact that she was sitting on, like, the, the swinging position just doesn't work that way, I don't think. Let me present and see what happens. Miss Al Dente, you previously testified that you were using that hat to cover the wound you received in the assault. It's normal for signorinas to cover up things they don't want others to see. That's not all, though. You also described the defendant as little if you recall. That is to say, Miss Cantabella is, at the very least, shorter than you. I've grown tall and healthy thanks to the wonderful Mediterranean sunshine. Let me ask you then. How did a girl shorter than you, holding a heavy pipe of backhanded, manage to land a blow to the back of your head? I'd say it's impossible, and I am jealous of your days at the Mediterranean. I know that people of your heritage have almost entirely flawless skin that's just so baby smooth and evenly textured and it's amazing, and I could never, and I hate that. Yeah. The fingerprints on the weapon show that the defendant held it backhanded. But even if she didn't, it is highly unlikely that she would be able to hit Miss Aldente's head like that. Do 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 do. Girl, keep swinging those little hips. Order! I will have order. What is the defense getting at? Objection! Oh jeez. Even if it was highly unlikely, it cannot be proven that it was impossible. Well, your job is to prove that things did happen, not to prove that they could have happened. Okay. Burden of proof, baby. Miss Cantabella's fingerprints were found on that pipe, your honor. Nothing can change that fact that it was the defendant who held the weapon. I have an explanation for that. Hm, that is so. But does the defense have any comments? Come on, Phoenix, I can't deny that. It's clear that Espella did hold that pipe. Hmm, she held it like this, right? Why would she do that? It'd be hard to hit anyone like this. Maya, you've got it! Just like that. You see, girl? Phoenix, do you see? When she holds it like that, it looks as if... Yeah, he's got it. He's got it, boys. The court recognizes the validity of the prosecution's objection. Fingerprints on the weapon prove that it was used by the defendant. Objection. Alicia, wanna be jealous? I never had acne. Yeah, Alicia, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. I had horrible cystic acne as a ch child, well, not a child, a teenager. And even as an adult, God bless, my face cleared up uh, pretty okay. But the, it, I don't want to zoom in too much. Like, my skin has very, very uneven texture. It's very pasty. It's very white. It just doesn't look baby smooth up close. I, I promise you guys, I, I don't get compliments on my skin. And I probably never will get compliments on my skin. It is what it is. <laughs> Everybody's got different aspects. Sometimes people do compliment my eyes, which you can't really see very well, and I actually hate my eyes, but um, yeah, skin is not one. Nobody's gonna be like, wow, George, you have really great skin. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. I, I don't have the, the nice, baby smooth, nice, evenly textured skin. I'm just happy I don't have the cystic acne anymore. <laughs> Take the battles you can win. <sighs> that doesn't prove she hit anyone with it. Objection! Oh my god, how many things are you going to object to? Nonsense! What else would she pick up a steel pipe for? Objection! Oh, I think I've got a pretty good idea. Well then, the defense may elaborate on its idea. What I say next will turn this trial around. Oh, we're making a ballsy statement. The defendant's fingerprints were left on the weapon when she tried to defend herself. Well, naturally, 
She held the pipe with both hands when she stopped it from coming down on her head. S stopped it? With both hands? That's right! Like this! Please, take another look at this photo. Just one thing, DM! Hello, thank you for joining me in the chat. These are not the fingerprints of an assailant, but rather the fingerprints of a victim who was defending herself. Ah! Which brings us to the conclusion that Miss Cantabella didn't attack the witness. She was in fact a victim, desperately trying to defend herself. Th this could not be! And if Miss Cantabella was a victim, well then the real question is who was the real assailant? There's only one person who could have done it. Oh, girl, I don't like your position right now. The only other person at the crime scene was Olivia Aldente. It was you, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah we're putting her in the hot speed. Order! If I cannot have order, this court will be adjourned. Be quiet, all of you. I oh, my God. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's amore eel. Except maybe not amore eel. Some kind of eel. You just don't quit, do you? Oh my god! Oh, she's gonna kill this thing on the stand! A lousy lawyer like you, you should get the chop! How about I show you how my knife up close? Objection! She's, yeah, objection. I object too. Can we get this thing off the thing? Have you lost your mind, Mr. Wright? The witness is the victim, not the assailant. There are no Fingerprints other than the defendants on the weapon. Objection. Yeah, please get the fish off the stand. <laughs> Look at the witness's outfit. Oh, Phoenix, let's not go there. Let's not get canceled. She's wearing gloves. Oh, <laughs> that's where you were going with that. That's why she left no prints. Oh my God, my boy's really fighting for his life out here. Ah, you prickly sea urchin. Objection. But you cannot be sure she was wearing gloves that night. Objection. The witness has called this her work outfit, so she must have been wearing it when she went to check supplies. Oh! Wow. You devious lawyer, slippery as an eel. It was me because I had gloves on, as if I was only, it was only me wearing gloves. Um, she's the only one in the courtroom wearing gloves. <laughs> Maya. There was that guy, the guard. He was wearing gloves too. Guard? Oh! Is that the previous witness? Oh, that's right! Gloves are part of the guard's uniform, by regulation. See, that guard, Johnny, uh, he was wearing the gloves too, that's night. Hmm, what do you say to that, Mr. Wright? Since you're claiming the assailant is the person who had gloves on, would that make the guard a suspect as well? Could Johnny be the culprit? No, and I'll tell you why in a second. Um, Zach, dented, Love your beautiful pecs. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, just one thing. It's been several years now since I played it, so I don't remember the details, but I do know that this was such a fun experience. I hope you enjoy it too. I hope to enjoy it just as much. Um, you think it's more the diet or the climate? I don't want to say something stupid though. I don't know. It's very, it's interesting. There, there, it's so many things. The diet, your environment, and also genetics. Like, is, is there a genetic component? There's probably some level of genetic component. There's some, probably some level of environmental component. Because, like, people of Italian heritage that live here in the States, like, you meet them and they also have very, very beautiful skin. <laughs> I will say. Um, so, no, it's impossible for Johnny to be the culprit because he left dusty, crusty fingerprints on, on his uh, flashlight, I think. Covered in chocolate fingerprints, yeah. Johnny Smiles is not the culprit. Why not? Anyone with gloves could have done it. Didn't you just say that? Well, no, I didn't, but we're gonna go off of it. However, it does seem plausible that the guard could have done it. He was wearing gloves after all. I'm afraid that's impossible, Your Honor, and I have proof. You do? Fascinating! Let's see this proof, if you really have it. Please enlighten us as to why Smiles cannot be the culprit. Provide the proof. Oh, I'm happy to. Here Take it is. That. His torch. Mr. Smiles is, to put it nicely, what you may call a free spirit. 
There's no guarantee he would follow the rules and wear his full uniform. Yeah, this is true. And this evidence proves that he did not wear the gloves. Wait! Don't throw that filthy torch at me! Will someone please wipe the chocolate off this evidence? The chocolate is the evidence, your honor. There it is. What? Mr. Smiles was snacking on a chocolate bar during his patrol. That's why his flashlight is in this sorry state. And covered in his chocolate fingerprints. God, I love this hand on the hip phoenix. Therefore, we know that he didn't wear gloves when patrolling the ship that night. Rule-breaking, chocolate-loving Johnny Smiles was not the culprit. What? What? That's ridiculous! I, I, I didn't have to read that whole line. Objection! Objection! I object to your objection. Your Honor! The defense has merely pointed out a possible... That's my job, sir. Your job is to provide proof. My job is to provide reasonable doubt. Okay, that's how these things work. I, at least the, maybe in England. To call this witness a criminal without actual evidence against her is preposterous. Objection. The prosecution's duty is to clear what doubts there may be regarding the defendant's guilt. Oh, jeez. And I have demonstrated that there is, at the very least, the possibility that the witness is not telling the truth. Objection! Oh my god. <laughs> the, the developers of this game, they definitely loved this guy's uh, voice acting. Because they are using that line, that objection line, as many times as they can. I wonder if this is going to be the only trial that he prosecutes in. Because usually the tutorial prosecutor is different from, like, the real prosecutor. At the very least, the spell Cantabella is not innocent! As corroborated by the PC Badger, the toy she attempted to steal. Ah! What was that? Did Olivia just freeze for a second? God, this poor eel. Prosecutor Flinch, explain to the court about this toy, this new piece of evidence. This is the stuffed toy the defendants tried to steal that night. Hmm. One of its legs would appear to be missing. Poor thing. This mishap befell PC Badger as the witness and defendant were fighting. The captain of the freighter reported the damage after the defendant's arrest. So, this is the stuffed animal Olivia snatched from Aspella. I see. The court would like to hear the witness's testimony regarding this evidence. Witness, your testimony. So when do witches come into play for us here? Not, not to get sidetracked, but it's like, at this particular moment in time, this whole case feels drastically different from the things that Professor Layton and Luke were dealing with. I can't help but notice that. Oh, jeez. Excuse me, witness. You've been asked to testify. Oh my god. Oh. Ah. I'm so very sorry. I got a little upset from all these accusations. I'm not used to this. To being called a liar. Yes. It's only natural. Don't worry about that. It's all that slimy attorney's fault. Oh, why do I feel like the eel on the chopping board? The witness will now testify. Tell us how you retrieved this toy from the defendant. Gladly. Oh, little Nostroma. I wonder what she's saying. I don't get it. <laughs> Girl's saying. Whatever she said, I'll make sure this is the last time she says it in court. All right, witness testimony. Still rocking those hips, I see. About PC Badger. I wrestled this toy back from the thief and then gave it to the police. When I found that girl, I thought I couldn't let her get away with our precious cargo. Naturalmente, I had to get that toy back from her first. Its leg got ripped off, though. 
But there's no way I could have attacked her with the pipe. I was holding the toy in one hand. I don't remember much about when I what I, about when I was it. I don't remember much about when I was it, but I got the toy back at least. Okay, <laughs> Frank. George, you forgot that it was Maximilian Galactica. Nostromer equals RC. Ah. Ah, I see. What a commendable attitude. I may not be a security guard, but I'll do whatever it takes for the sake of our ship. Wow. Employees always doing the most. It didn't do much good in the end. This PC badger is way too damaged to be sold. These lovely little toys are made at a workshop in London. <laughs> we transport them down the River Thames, distributing them to children as we go. Didn't she call them bizarro toys earlier? And now suddenly they're cute? <laughs> and what about the fingerprints on this toy? It is a soft toy after all, so no usable fingerprints were found. Hmm. Well, that is unfortunate. Regardless, the court accepts it into evidence. Alright, the toy Espella tried to steal. One leg was ripped off during her fight with Olivia. Great. Defense may now cross-examine the witness. Alright. I might need a little bit more uh, pressing on this one, because I don't totally know where we're going with this. Okay, let's press everything. When you entered the cargo hold, Espella had this stuffed animal... <laughs> Naturalmente, I got her red-handed. She was trying to steal it, I'm telling you. Hmm, to be honest, it doesn't sound like she's lying. But, is a spella really a thief? We can't be sure about it, just picking something up doesn't make you a thief. Anyway, something else in her testimony is on my mind right now. Has the defense changed its mind about the innocence of its clients now? Witness, continue your testimony. What did you do after coming across the defendant? Yeah, what did you do? When I found that girl, I thought I couldn't let her get away with our precious cargo. Hold it! This precious cargo was picked up from London? Yeah, the workshop where they make them is by the River Thames. Right, okay. As it's a regularly direct delivery service, we did not see the need to investigate the cargo. If you confiscated our cargo for inspection, I wouldn't be able to carry out my cooking experiments. Confiscate? What the heck is she cooking with exactly? I think we can all see how committed Miss Al Dente is to her work. Commitment and passion are the main ingredients of every dish I cook. Okay. Um, its leg got ripped off. How did the leg get ripped off? The stuffed animal got its leg ripped off when you were fighting? Mm-hmm, yeah. It came off easier than the shell of a freshly boiled lobster. So let's see. Oh, wow, this thing is kind of flimsy. Uh-oh. Stop picking on PC Badger! He may be a plushie, but there's no reason to make fun of him, Nick. It's not made very well, though. It looks like it might just come apart if you pull at it a bit. I ripped it out of the girl's hands and kept it with me until the police came. Okay. No way I could have attacked her with the pipe. I was holding the toy in one hand. Okay. So, you didn't hit the defendant with the steel pipe. Aren't you forgetting who's the victim here, sweetie? I am... And I didn't strike myself with that pipe. Aren't you getting things backwards? Feeling dizzy? Maybe you haven't been eating properly. Hmm. She's right. Someone else must have hit her. Um, maybe I shouldn't be saying this, but... I don't remember much about when I was it, but I got the toy back at least. Hold it! Oh, when I was hit! Wow, that one flew over my head. <laughs> you don't remember much about it. Yeah, and the room was dark because only the emergency light was on. 
there is definitely no one else in that room. Only me and that little girl. So, it had to be her that hit me. She's not having second thoughts about that, it seems. Okay. So that's it, huh? Well, Nick? Uh, this one's easy. I know what to do. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. <laughs> this one's so easy. You're finally starting to act like your normal self. That jet lag must have hit you like a ton of bricks, huh? There is a clear contradiction in Olivia's testimony. It's time to present some evidence to expose her lies. Okay. I sold the toy back from the thief, but I found the girl. Couldn't let her get away with our precious cargo. Had to get the toy back from her. It's a leg ripped off, though, but there was no way I could have attacked her in the pipe. I was holding the toy in one hand. So what evidence do I have that's gonna really save my ass here? Um, let's look at the details, I guess. Um... Well... One possibility is that this particular toy has its tag, but Aspella had a tag on her. So... The toy seems a little bit not correct. I don't know where I could present that, though. So let me go back a second. I had to get the toy back from her. Its leg got ripped off, though. Maybe here? No way I could have attacked her. I was holding the toy in one hand. Precious cargo. Its leg got ripped off, though. Okay. So... What about this? Objection. Nope, not the right statement. Oh, boys. Oops, oops, oops. Sorry. My, my bad. These things happen from time to time. Jeez. Oh, God, we don't have a health bar anymore. We're back to the exclamation points. Penalty? Okay, so that was not correct. Maybe this is the one. Maybe this is the one. Let me try the... You didn't hit the defendant with the steel pipe. I am. I didn't myself with the pipe. I haven't been eating properly. Someone else had to have hit her. But I got the toy back at least. Maybe it was this statement, actually. Hold Let me it. press this one again. You don't remember much about it. Yeah, the room was dark. So it had to be here that hit me. Okay, there's a clear contradiction in her testimony. Don't worry, boys, this happens to me sometimes. I'm gonna figure it out. <sighs> I wrestled this toy back from the thief and gave it to the police. Maybe this is the statement, actually. Hold it! I, I think the tag is the right thing. Um... Caught her red-handed. She was trying to steal it. Okay. Doesn't sound like she's lying. But do I present... Do I present the tag or do I present the toy? There's a lot of open-endedness here that I feel like it could go a couple of different ways. Let's try... The rest of the toy back from the thief and I gave it to the police. That toy has a tag on it. But Aspella has a tag that was torn from PC Badger. Let's try here. Objection. Yes! Okay. Had the right idea, just needed the right statement. I, I get nervous with these things. Miss El Dente, I would like to confirm just one thing. The stuffed animal you submitted to the police. Is it this one? Yeah, that's the one. No doubt about it. I'm sorry, but if that's the case... Things simply don't add up. Yeah, no they don't. What doesn't add up? Um, if it's about the leg, it's that girl's fault. It got ripped off because she wouldn't let go. Nah, hunty. The problem's not something that's missing from the stuffed animal. On the contrary, actually. It's something that shouldn't be there in the first place. Something that shouldn't be there? And that is, of course, this item. Th that's... 
This is the final piece of evidence received from the guard, Mr. Smiles. When I seized the girl at the crime scene, she was clasping this in her hand. She didn't even seem to notice. And what would that be? It would appear to be the PC Badger's tag. Strange, isn't it? Something was definitely ripped off this plushie. But it wasn't its leg. It was the tag. Oh god. This poor eel. You noticed it too, didn't you, Miss Aldente? If this is the stuffed animal that Miss Cantabella was holding when you found her, then why is the tag still on it? Yeah, yeah we got her in the hot seat. What's she gonna say to this girl? Order! I will have order. What is the meaning of this? Hey, you! Tasteless looking prosecutor over there! <laughs> yes? What's this about a tag? You didn't tell me anything about that! If you'll please calm down! It's no use blaming the prosecutor. Uh huh? He didn't even know this tag existed. No objection! <laughs> oh, Agnes! I had not been informed of such evidence! If you had this in your possession, why didn't you hand it to the police? Sorry, prosecutor. I'm an expert at what I do. Right, right, right. Okay, we just saw this. <laughs> he waited to, to do it single-handedly. It, it, we've got those class the classic Phoenix Wright flashbacks from five minutes earlier. For better or for worse, this tag's existence has only recently come to light. Neither the prosecution nor you, your honor, knew about it before this trial. Uh -huh. But then... Why is there a to tag on this toy? How come this toy is a tag? Well, the answer's simple. There's a tag on this stuffed animal because... Uh, she took the wrong toy, I'm guessing. That's what we're gonna go with. Or the toy was swapped. Shit, I might have picked wrong. Miss El Dente took a different plushie by mistake. No, no, oof, big oof. I think she did this very much on purpose. What's that? She took a different one? The toys all look the same, so she ended up picking the no wrong one. Objection. How can you claim she would make such a mistake? The toy's missing a leg! Oof. What you said is so ludicrous that I raised an objection for no reason! How about we hang a useless attorney tag on your neck, darling? Alright, great. Let's all gang up on me. Do I get another penalty for this? Okay, I get a second chance. I got it. I got it. The toys were swapped. The toy was swapped. I'm confident. <laughs> There's only one possibility. Miss Al Dente, before handing the plushie into the police, you swapped it for another. <sighs> Listen to yourself. Why would I even do something like that? Ridiculo. And that's right. That tag must be a fake. A fake? Why would you think that? Oh, <laughs> jeez. That chocolate freak must be trying to frame me. That's what it is. Objection! Yeah, object to that. Mr. Smiles has no motive to do something like no that. Objection! <laughs> no motive? It doesn't require much thinking to come up with one. He wanted attention! <laughs> Oh god, he's trying to be an influencer. <laughs> yes, what he said. The guard lied to show off. That's all there is to it. Did Johnny produce bogus evidence to draw attention to himself? I'm inclined to say it's impossible. It's an interesting theory, but it's impossible. And how do you know? Give me a second to think about that. <laughs> you, I'll dice you like an onion. Hmm... Anyway. <laughs> Was Mr. Smiles lying? There's an easy way to find out. What? How do you plan to check it? By checking the fingerprints, of course. Fingerprints? Ah! According to Mr. Smiles' testimony, when he seized Miss Cantabella, she was holding the tag in her hand. Therefore, 
Her fingerprints should still be on that tag. Yeah. Yes, they should be there. I hope they're there. Bailiff, have this evidence investigated immediately. That was awesome, Nick. We almost got her now. Mr. Flinch, I have a question for you. What? What is it? I must flinch in shock. When you searched the crime scene, did you find a toy without a tag? Hmm. Well, Mr. Flinch, did you? Um, no, we, um... Considering the circumstances, it didn't seem necessary to investigate quite so thoroughly. But uh, at the very least, I can tell you that all the toys in the crate had tags on. Hmm. Excuse me. Your Honor. What is it, Mr. Wright? It appears no stuffed animal was found without a tag. Which means that it may still be hidden at the crime scene. Yeah! Your Honor, the defense requests that the ship be searched thoroughly this time. Send in a forensics team to be there immediately. You're requesting another search? Objection! What? Surely you can't be serious! Whether the toy was swapped or not, it doesn't matter in the least! They are all the same! Any of them will do just fine! That's exactly why it's important. All these plushies are the same. There's no need to swap one for another. And yet... This hunty did. Why is the witness getting so worked up about it? What is suspicious here? How is this going to come into play with the jewels? Did she hide a jewel in a plushie? Is she a jewel thief? That's where I think this is going. I oh, wow, this angle. Whoa! I had a feeling that there was something odd about this. Case. Dude, that looks sick. A stolen stuffed animal. And an assault connected to it. There had to be more to it. There had to be another crime under the surface. There it is. Nick! This is it. What do I do? Request the search. <clears throat> Your Honor, the defense insists on this search. Should a plushie without a tag be found on the ship, then there's a strong possibility that this case will be resolved. Objection! <clears throat> Execution does not acknowledge the need for- Oh! Holy Christ! Oh my god! You can't! No, no! You can't search it again! You just can't! Adora? What? Witness! Miss Al Dente! Why did you swap the stuffed animal? And why are you so afraid of having the ship searched? PC Badger holds all the answers. Oh my god. I... I say, Mr. Wright! Could it be that you already know the reason behind the swap? Of course, I don't have any definitive proof, but... When it comes to pointing out a possibility, I might have something. Hmm, really? Very well then, let's see some evidence! Do you have any evidence that would explain why Miss Altente is against the search? Um, yeah, I think it's the stolen newspaper. Take Not the that. stolen newspaper, <laughs> the stolen jewel. There's a certain article in this newspaper. Elusive jewel thieves at large in London. Scotland Yard on red alert. Oh, that robbery. I've heard about it, of course. A group of thieves robbed a jewelry shop and made away with about 50 pieces of jewelry. Many extremely valuable stones were stolen as well. Scotland Yard's under great pressure to find them. All packages sent out from London are being scrutinized by police. And what does this have to do with our case? Nothing! I beg to differ. The jewel theft took place in London. And that's where our freighter picked up its cargo. But London? Uh, that can't be! Witness! Oh, she's in the hot seat now. Boys, this is a giant ass fish. That night, you discovered the defendant in the cargo hold. Oh, oh my god, the breathing. 
Oh, she's stressed. She was holding one for the, of the plushies. You knew you had to get it back. You had to get it back at all costs. But why? Why go so far for a plushie? I'm nervous to see her freak out. There's only one possible reason. You couldn't afford to have the police discover what was inside of it. Oh, 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 oh my god. Oh, whoa, oh, serves you right, you bitch. Someone get this thing in the water. How, where did she pull this out of? Girl. Are you hiding tuna in your... Never mind. Is that where that smell is coming from? Wow. We've just received a report from the team investigating the crime scene. This toy was hidden between a storage unit and a pipe. Ah. The toy has been cut open and the contents examined. And this was found inside. A pink diamond worth approximately 100,000 pounds. We have also received a report from the crime lab. The defendant's fingerprints have been found on the tag. Do you have anything to say, Miss El Dente? <laughs> oh, bitch slapped by a fish. They put the fucking print on her face. Wow. Girl, how does that feel? I lost, didn't I? So, you are... Yeah, I'm one of them. I'm one of the jewel thieves. My role was to get the loot out of London. The police never checked the regular shipments from that workshop. We decided to take advantage of that blind spot. Indeed, the regular direct delivery service has been overlooked by the police! <clears throat> Possibly because that workshop produces the very mascots representing the police. The other crew had nothing to do with it. I used their ship. That's all. It was you who hid the jewels inside the plushies. There was one jewel in each toy. I was carrying them away, one by one. And the defendant happened to pick one of the toys up. I had my art sense still when I saw that the girl in the cargo hold. Whenever I was free, I stood guard in front of that room, and yet she somehow got in. Yeah, Espella's weird like that. She seems to always get into places without like any kind of rhyme or reason. So there was, she was, in the room, with the hidden loot, one of the toys, in her, and... Um, so how did Espella get in there? I don't know if she was trying to steal the toy or what. But I just had to get it back from her, no matter the cost. Then I ended a different toy. I made it look like it was ripped in the fight. So it would have been all over for me if the police had found any of the jewels. I see. But... Di so did she get hit on the head or not? But wait... <laughs> Who was it in the end? Who hit Olivia? Yes, Maya, thank you. Oh yeah, I almost forgot about that. At first, I thought it must have been that little girl that hit me. But now, I don't know. You don't know? No one else was supposed to be in that room. Dark Law, maybe? Uh, Dark Law is kind of a mysterious character. She just kind of showed up. Aspella was by herself with Leighton and Luke. Aspella goes on a boat, and now Aspella shows up with some woman, Dark Law? I, I guess it would have to have been Dark Law, but maybe. What if there was someone in the shadows? Sounds like a Dark Law kind of thing. Some mischievous person hidden in the darkness. Sounds about right to me. I do think this is, we're, we're wrapping up here, so I, I think we'll be able to finish this off and then close out. I know it's a bit, we've hit the two hour mark now, 
But but I think we're about to close out court, and I think we'll probably get it to be continued. Or, yeah, so the next chapter or something. This was a most unusual case. It cannot be said that all mysteries have been resolved, but it's become clear that Miss Cantabella is innocent. Uh, well then, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor? It would seem that I owe you thanks for helping us see the truth. You're welcome, Your Honor. <laughs> I was just doing my job, like I always do. I'm Phoenix Wright, and I solve mysteries. Oh, jeez. My uh, green skin's being real finicky. Is that really the smartest thing you could have come up with? And Mr. Flinch. Yes, Your Honor? This trial was part of the Legal League of Attorneys Exchange Program, wasn't it? May this trial serve as a lesson for you, too. Said understood. Ooh. Ooh. It is as you say, Your Honor. <laughs> Oh my god. Don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look! Without <laughs> my glasses, I can't see and I don't want to be seen! Where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Whoa! Ahem! <laughs> <laughs> well then. The court has reached its verdict. I pronounce the defendant to spell it Cantabella. Not guilty, boys! Where's my confetti? There she is. Let me look at it in 3D. Wow! Okay, we got a little glimpse. Nice. Uh, congratulations! You did it, Nick! Yeah, thanks. I guess I should be happy. Oh, hi. But Dark Lost Cold Glaze is staring at me like daggers. Alright, what is going on with my green screen today? Girl, you gonna be okay on me? Yes, no, maybe so? Close that nonsense out of here. Ugh! Thank you, Mr. Wright. You are better than I thought. Had I known earlier, I would have asked you to prove a spell it innocent from the very start. Oh yeah, I'm sure you would have. Thanks, Hundy. Um, well I'm glad you're happy about the verdict. Espella, come and thank Mr. Wright. Uh, thank you, Mr. Wright. Hey, glad I could help, girl. Hmm? Hey, Espella! What's that big book you've got there? Oh no. Oh no, is this where we cross paths? Oh, please, forgive her. She's a bit shy, you see. She's very fond of books. At any rate, now Espella can return to her peaceful life at our boarding school. And it's all thanks to your hard work, Mr. Wright. Alright, I guess she's not much of a talker. Now please, excuse us. We have some formalities to attend to. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Mr. Wright? You were truly outstanding in that courtroom today. Farewell. I might have accidentally helped her a lot. Because, I mean, if Espella was found guilty, she might have gone to jail. But I just turned Espella into Dark Law's hands. I don't know if that was the play to make. Ugh, <sighs> it's finally over. You know, something's still bothering me about this case. The person who hit Olivia. Where did they go? That's true. We don't know who actually assaulted Olivia. If it wasn't Espella, there must have been another person at the crime scene. But neither Olivia nor Johnny saw anyone else. The room was dark, save for the emergency light. I'm sure someone hid in the shadows. And Johnny was wearing sunglasses, so I'm actually amazed he saw anything at all. He missed all those clues, so it's not much of a stretch to imagine he missed a perpetrator, too. Hmm... Well, how about we, how about we head back now? Okay! Let's go check out the Tower Bridge while we still have some, some daylight left. Let's. Let's get oh. out of here- oh. Oh. Hmm? Huh? What is it, Maya? Yeah. There, on the couch. Isn't that Espella's book? Uh-oh. It is the book she was holding. We should return it to her. Should we? Hey, Nick. Let's see what kind of stuff Espella likes to read. <laughs> Classic Maya wanting to snoop on everybody. The mischievous voice is Just perfect. Just quit it, Maya. Oh, oh! Huh? 
Labyrinthia. Hmm? What? Huh? <gasps> Drop it and run! Drop it and run, girl! Huh? Maya, look! Huh? Oh my god, we're in it too! Hey, Nick! Look, that's us, isn't it? That's us, boys. We're the Phoenix crew. We're the Phoenix crew! We gotta represent! Uh-oh. No, I'm sure there's a very scientific explanation for what just happened here. I'm, I'm, I will work through it at some point. To be continued. All right. So I guess we've done the prologue for both boys, Phoenix and Layton, which means what happens next? <laughs> Christ, if I know, I guess we're going to find out. I guess this is where the game really starts. Credibility. Oh, I lost a little bit of credibility. Oof. Didn't realize we were keeping score. Well, what are you going to do about it? Okay. Can I save? I can. So yeah, I guess tomorrow we will find out what in the world is going to happen inside of this, like, book world that we're being transported to. I'm curious. Um, so let's, uh, I think we're probably going to close out, right? Something's going to start, yeah. We'll start in the next one. Thank you guys, as always, so much for being here. I got to close out because we're past the two-hour mark. Like this video, please, if you've stuck around the whole time. Subscribe if you want to see more from me. I think this is going to be a good adventure. I loved being back in the courtroom with Phoenix, and I'm excited to do some more puzzles with Layton, and I'm curious to see what in the world is about to happen inside of this storybook. All right, have a good night, you guys, and I will see you tomorrow at 7 o'clock Eastern time to do some more Phoenix Wright versus Layton. Toodles, boys!